If you break down on a narrow country road, or even worse, on a smart motorway with no hard shoulder, then the first thing you should do is turn on your hazard lights. Unfortunately, the Morris Minor doesn't have any, so we'll fit some. We'll need to dismantle the dashboard and do some wiring. If you don't feel comfortable with that, there are a couple of other videos you should watch first. There are links at the end of this video and in the video description. There are a number of different hazard warning kits available for classic cars. They work in various different ways and have their own individual advantages and disadvantages. The one I've chosen is simple and robust. It's just a flasher relay and a fancy switch. We want to place the switch somewhere obvious where both passenger and driver can reach it easily, but I don't want to spoil the originality of the car by drilling holes in the dashboard. My underbonnet valve for the heater is the tap design, so the heater valve cable isn't connected. If we remove it, it leaves a great place to fit the switch. But of course you can fit the switch any way you like. This switch is designed to fit in a 33mm hole. I couldn't find a bracket with a 33mm hole, so we'll use one with a 28mm hole and enlarge it. We mount the flasher unit in a relay socket and put it under the dash. I'm a great believer in using the correct coloured wires. You don't have to, but it makes life a lot easier. There's a link to a good supplier in the video description. We wire up the switch before we mount it. That will make everything easier to see. The switch comes with a rather scary looking circuit diagram, but if we look at it bit by bit, it's actually pretty simple. We don't want anybody operating the indicators when the hazard lights are on. That would just confuse things with an unpredictable flashing pattern. We can see from the circuit diagram that the switch between terminals 15 and 49 is to disconnect the indicator circuit. We break the indicator circuit and insert that switch here. As the wires are reversible without ill effect, we can use the same colour for both. In this case, green and brown. We need to make up two lengths of green and brown wire with a spade connector on one end and a bullet on the other. 16.5 amp cable is more than enough. We'll attach one connector to pin 15 on the switch and we'll attach the other to pin 49. We need to break the green and brown cable here where it comes out of the indicator arm and route it through our switch. We can find the right point by following the cable from the indicator stalk and locating the green and brown wire. Be careful because there's also a green and red wire and it's easy to confuse them in a dim light. Conveniently, there is a bullet connector here so we don't need to cut the cables. We we'll just pull the bullet out. And add another bullet connector to it. Now all we have to do is plug the two wires from our switch into the two bullet connectors and our switch is inserted into the indicator circuit. If we activate the hazard switch, it should now disconnect the original indicator circuit. Let's test it. And it's working perfectly. Now we'll temporarily remove the wires we've just fitted and take a look at pins 58B and 31. 
These aren't for a switch, they're for the bulb that illuminates the switch. If we put a voltage on pin 58B and earth pin 31, it lights up. We can take the voltage from the car's panel light circuit. The colour to use is red and white. For pin 58B, we'll prepare a red and white wire with a spade connector at one end and a bare soldered end at the other. For pin 31, the earth pin, we'll prepare a black wire with a ring terminal. So the white and red goes on pin 58B and the black goes on pin 31. Under the speedometer to the right is a switch that controls the panel lights. It can be freed by undoing two screws. It's a little unusual in having screw block connectors, hence the soldered termination. It normally has just the two panel light wires, but there may be others if your car has additional instruments. We'll connect our white and red wire here. The black wire can be bolted directly to any convenient earthing point. The new switch should now light up with the panel lights. And it's working fine. Now we'll temporarily remove these wires and move to the next stage. Before doing that, I'll need a screwdriver. That's better. Now comes the main part. The switch between 30 and 30B controls the power to the hazard flasher. We want the hazard lights to operate even when the ignition is turned off or a fuse is blown. So we'll take the power from an unfused always on circuit. We can pick that up from the back of the lighting switch. For pin 30, we'll prepare a brown wire with a spade terminal on one end and a piggyback spade terminal on the other. For pin 30B, we'll prepare a white and orange wire with a spade terminal on each end, but the one at the flasher relay end is a special type with a tab to lock it into the relay socket. The return from the flasher unit goes to pin 49A. We'll use a green and light green wire with a spade terminal at each end. Again, the terminal at the flasher end must be the tabbed type. Finally, the R and L pins carry the signal to the flasher circuits. These use green and white and green and red wires respectively. They need a spade terminal at one end and a bullet at the other. First, we'll attach the brown wire on pin 30 to the back of the lighting switch to provide the power. We'll attach the white and orange wire from pin 30B to the flasher unit. For now, we won't use the relay socket, we'll just plug the wire directly to the flasher for testing purposes. We'll connect the green and light green wire to the return pin on the flasher. We'll connect the R and L cables to the two bullet connectors for the respective indicator circuits of the same colored wire. Now we can reconnect the battery and try it out. And it works perfectly. So now we can start to mount things properly. We can mount the switch bracket to the dashboard with a small piece of angled steel. It needs a couple of M4 holes drilled to mount the switch bracket and a third hole to fix it to the dashboard. We'll give it a quick spray to match the rest of the dash. We'll pre-position some crosshead bolts to hold the switch bracket. 
we'll fix the angled steel to the dash with an M4 screw. Using a long one will make it easier to fit the lock washer and nut. We can fit the angled steel to the underside of the dash using one of the holes from the heater cable mount. Once that's fixed, we can slide the switch bracket into place and tighten it up with a screwdriver. And that's nice and secure. Now we reattach all the cables we tested to the switch. There's a complete list of the wiring connections in the video description. The terminals are a tight fit, so be sure they're all pushed firmly home. Now we can fit the switch to the mounting bracket. And we'll attach the other ends of the wires just like we did before. The two green and brown wires go to the two bullet connectors that break the existing indicator circuit. The red and white wire goes to the instrument light switch. The black wire is bolted to an earthing point. The brown wire picks up power from the back of the light switch. The green and red wire goes to the bullet connector for the left side indicators and the green and white wire goes to the bullet connector for the right hand side indicators. The two remaining wires will go to the flasher relay, but now we'll use the relay socket. Both of these wires end in spade terminals that have tabs to lock them in place. The white and orange cable goes to pin 1. We push it in firmly until it clicks. The same for the green and light green wire. That goes to pin 2. If you put a connector in the wrong place, you can free it by pushing the tab down with a straightened paper clip. Mounting the socket is easier if you put a mounting screw in place before seating the relay. Make sure the relay is firmly pushed home. Now we can place the relay and socket under the dashboard and pass the mounting screw up through one of the existing holes. Add a lock washer and nut and tighten firmly. We'll reconnect the battery and do a final check. If all looks good, we can reassemble everything, not forgetting to tidy up the wiring with a few cable ties. And that's the job done. A simple and reliable hazard light system using just a flasher relay and a switch. Thanks for watching and see you next time.